Okay, we've got to talk more about Jason Sands, the newest UFO whistleblower. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff in what he's had to say. There's a lot of people talking about it and doing deep dives into this stuff. And it's it's really juicy and weird. So let's talk about it. Uh, get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, yeah, Jason uh, Sands, uh, who is going to be featured in James Fox's uh, newest documentary, The Program. Uh, he has also testified to Congress. He seems like a pretty solid guy. Uh, I trust James Fox. I don't think he would uh, feature uh, Jason Sands if, if he hadn't done his due diligence on him. Uh, but the things that Jason says are pretty wild. I mean, he talks about stuff like 20 and back. Trademark. <laughs> I just love that quote. Okay, so Jason Sand says, yes, that's why I joined the chat last night. I do want to address uh, inaccuracies uh, from people that are blogging today. Number one, I didn't kill any blue aliens. Number two, I should have been very clear that I was part of the UAP forum and not employed by the UAP task force. Okay, very good. So he's clearing some things up. Uh, Ian Harding uh, has some, also, some good points here too. Jason said the three main reasons he is coming forward now instead of waiting. One, he wants people to know we are not alone. Two, he heard over his phone in communications wiretaps a group using reverse engineered vehicles to smuggle drugs. He wants the other three, uh, yeah, three, uh, he wants the other 39 whistleblowers. So he is one of David Grush's 40 whistleblowers, which makes sense since he's associated with the UAP task force, as is David Grush. Uh, he wants the other 39 whistleblowers, some who are still in the legacy program, to see that you can come forward and talk about it as long as you don't say any classified stuff. He wants them to follow his lead. Uh, and I hope they do. I hope they they come out and they speak about their experiences, what they are allowed to talk about. And it's interesting where he talks about uh, the control group or somebody using reverse engineered uh, craft, you know, their own UFOs, ARVs, whatever you want to call them, to smuggle drugs. That is really interesting. And uh, Joey is not my name, who's done a lot of uh, research into Michael Herrera's case uh, and has talked to Mike says, uh, Jason slash Courtney, I think I know which whistleblower is being referred to below and I'd like, he'd like to get in touch with you. Please reach out to me. Uh, so yeah, it sounds like Mike Herrera, and I'm just supposing here, is trying to get in touch with uh, Sands. And I think that is really uh, compelling uh, evidence that Sands is on the level, that Jason Sands is on the level. Uh, we just heard talk about ARVs possibly being used for drug smuggling. Well, my career saw an ARV possibly being used uh, for gun smuggling. He saw guns being loaded on an ARV along with what might be people in a crate. Uh, Lance Corporal Jonathan Weigand and his uh, experience in, in Peru uh, also came away with the impression that the control group uh, or some element of the control group was uh, using the black market, aka, you know, guns and drugs and that sort of thing, uh, to, uh, to fund themselves, at least in part. Of course, we also know they siphoned money uh, from, you know, other projects through Congress. So, uh, but yeah, um, uh, apparently, uh, Jason, this is a quote from Jason Sands, I'll just read it. Uh, there is some craft that I knew were in our inventory coming out of, in these in these stories in Indonesia, talking about my career, mainly that caused me some concern that there were things being exchanged from the cargo bay. This looks an awful lot like something I already know about, and I wanted to make sure that things were still on the up and up. These Those concerns are things I wanted to bring forward to Congress to investigate. So yeah, it sounds like he's talking about some very sim similar stuff 
uh, to what Mike Herrera talked about, and he references seemingly Mike Herrera's case directly. Of course, Dennis Smith, one of my favorite remote viewers, isn't buying any of this. He says anyone claiming blue beings is a red flag to me. Now, I think he's probably referring to Corey Good and Corey Good's blue avians. And I totally get it. I'm not a Corey Good guy. I never had been. I've always uh, had an active distrust for Corey Good. Um, but, but we're going to get into some weird stuff. We're going to get into some weird stuff, guys. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, we're not talking about the Blue Avians. That's not what Jason Sands saw. And also, there's this interesting quote from Ross Coulthard. Uh, I'm talking to people at the moment, and this is creepy, but people at the moment who are contacting me, and I've had three do it now from all over the world, who say they've they felt an urge to contact me and they tell me that they've communicated with a blue being that has imbued them and downloaded them with information. And in one case, the person developed an ability to instantaneously understand physics equations, highly complex mathematics. Yeah, that would have come in real helpful when I was in school. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in my research into UFOs and aliens and the paranormal, uh, blue beings do come up. Uh, there do seem to be blue beings. And some of the grays that people see are actually more blue. Uh, but the blue, be blue beings people typically see are uh, the Arcturians. That's what a lot of people call them. They are more uh, elegant uh, beings. They, they are uh, higher dimensional enlightened beings. Um, seemingly, I mean, I've, I've never run across one, uh, but that is kind of the lore on the Arcturians and they are said to be blue. Of course, they're not the only blue beings running around. Uh, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, the, the Hindu gods, some of those guys are blue. Were they Arcturian or some sort of uh, blue higher dimensional being? Hey guys, totally possible from my own experience. I know that some aspects of Hinduism uh, were legit. Now, they were tapping into some true spiritual uh, underlying reality there. So who knows, guys? Who knows? I've actually seen evidence for some underlying spiritual reality to several religions and um, had, had experience with it. And one of those was Hinduism. And again, they've got these these blue beings. Okay, okay, but what about Corey Good and 20 and back? Trademark. What about all that stuff? And here is Jason saying that. But do you know much about 20 and back? Yes. Is that something you could talk about? I'm not comfortable talking about it, but I served but it. I was forced to serve in it when I was taken out of the program. Okay, UFO intros takes note to that because I talked about that on one of your spaces like three months ago, and you're like, what's that? But do you know? Okay, so he doesn't really want to talk about it. He doesn't feel comfortable with talking about it. And I think that is important. This is an over five hour interview or conversation with Jason Sands, and he doesn't want to talk about uh, possibly one of the most juicy things that you could talk about. So if he were making stuff up, uh, he would want to talk about that. And he didn't. And I think that's significant. It sounds like he is still unpacking that experience. Now, many of you will be familiar with the idea of 20 and back, but here is Corey Good himself explaining. Well, the 20 and back story in the book is that you're taking off planet, you serve 20 years, your age regress, and you're put back in time uh, to where you were first removed. So yeah, so that is what Corey Good claims to have experienced, and it sounds like Jason Sands may have experienced something similar. Listen, I've well, told, no, no, listen, I have told you hey, I'm that I made up stuff <laughs> on top of, it, and in this book it says so. Move, move. So yes, I did make up stories about the secret space program extrapolated off of my uh, experiences that I told you about earlier. So yeah, so Corey Good made stuff up, but he made stuff up extrapolating from possibly genuine experiences. Here's a question put to Jason Sands. You mentioned 20 and back. Now, are you confirming the Corey Good testimony? Or are you confirming just that this is a phenomenon where people can go 20 years into the future and then be like regressed into their former bodies or something like that? Can you give 
a bit of information on. And Jason Sands replies, I can't explain the experience, but um, it was similar to what he, good, calls 20 and back, is what I was introduced to. Uh, that we didn't call it 20 and back, but it was definitely something that I had to pay penance for, for getting out of the program. Uh, question, I'm not quite sure how to wrap the, that around my head. Uh, Jason Sands says, well, I don't either. To tell you the truth, it was a very strange experience. I'm not quite comfortable talking about the whole thing in detail at this point because it was so um in many ways. But maybe sometime in the future, I'll be able to come to grips with it and, you know, talk about it. So yeah, so he definitely seems to be unpacking that experience still to this day. Joe Mergia reminds us of the Scott Andrews uh, case. And uh, I, we don't know all the details of that yet, but Lou Elizondo is quoted as saying, uh, I am aware of all the facts regarding this true story and to call it a bombshell would be an understatement. Buckle up. And this is an article um, uh, Joe Mergia is, uh, is uh, reposting here. Simon & Schuster imprint wins bidding war for twist-filled memoir by U.S. intelligence officer tangled up in mysterious military program. Exclusive Simon & Schuster imprint gallery books has won a bidding war for North American publishing rights to a twist-filled true story rooted in intrigue surrounding a U.S. Air Force program. The log line for the memoir by Scott Andrews takes some time to unpack, but it's a doozy. Andrews is a former senior U.S. soldier and decorated intelligence officer who conducted global counterterrorism operations on behalf of the U.S. during a 36-year military career. Shortly after returning from an overseas mission, he began to suffer from rare life-threatening ailments that defied medical explanation. Rather than succumbing, he instead began to experience special, inexplicable abilities such as remote viewing, and his body began to heal, baffling doctors. As he sought more information about his health, this is where it gets pertinent, Andrews came across a file compiled for him by his late father. It contained records from a past he did not remember, including documents indicating he was removed from school for weeks every year from first through 12th grades. The records also contained a shocker that he received an honorable discharge from the U.S. Air Force and worked in space intelligence communications as a minor. Andrews maintains he has no memory of having served in the U.S. Air Force. So could Andrews, Sands, and Good and likely others all be part of some crazy space program? Were they indeed were taken uh, and forced to serve and then later had their memories wiped? Obviously, that's a that's a crazy story. We need a lot more corroboration on that. Um, I have always looked at Corey Good askance. And after that deposition came out, I looked at him even more askance. But could his claims have some uh, basis in reality? Uh, could Jason Sands have experienced uh, that underlying reality along with uh, Scott Andrews. So, um, you know, we just, we don't have enough information on that. But just because Jason Sands is talking about some crazy stuff doesn't mean it's not true. So, um, again, James Fox is standing by him uh, so far. I mean, he, I don't think he's come out making any big statements uh, that I've seen yet after Jason Sands, um, you know, appearance on spaces, although he was in communication with Sands at the time and he was aware that Sands was doing that. So, um, but uh, James Fox uh, seems like he is standing by him. He hasn't said anything to the contrary. Um, he is apparently one of David Grush's 40 whistleblowers and he has testified to Congress. Uh, he has been cleared to talk about certain things uh, through Dobster and as long as he doesn't talk about specifically classified stuff, it sounds like he's, uh, he's willing to talk about, you know, what he can talk about. So yeah, I, I am not dismissing Jason Sands. Uh, there's a lot of um, a reason to think that he might be credible, like I just said. But his claims definitely merit further investigation. Uh, and, you know, as that interview was saying, uh, we need to kind of wrap our heads around that. 
but it sure would be helpful uh, in wrapping our heads around it if we had more information. If there is some version of the 20 and back program, uh, then, you know, we need to know about it. Uh, we don't have much information on that. Uh, there are multiple people that claim to have experienced that or something similar. Could there be some there there? Could there be some there there? Uh, now, uh, Corey Good Space Force, uh, yeah, TM probably, uh, Corey Good. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know about any of that. It sounds like Corey Good was just making some stuff up based on his own experiences. Uh, but again, there may have been some underlying there there. However, we know from people like Mike Carrera and various others that the control group does have space-faring vehicles and they do go into space. As Mike said, they go into space so often they get bored by going into space. What are they doing up there? They're doing something. They have missions. They have, they have something going on. They have some big projects going on. They likely have large ships. They are interacting with beings. So uh, it's very likely that some version of the Space Force uh, is real. Not necessarily Corey Good's version, but some version of it likely exists. So could Jason Sands have some experience with that? Could be, guys. Could be. Obviously, we need more information. We need more information, but I find his testimony very compelling. But it is wild. It is a wild story, and we, we need more information about it. But I can't wait to get that information, and I can't wait for other whistleblowers to come forward. Do they all have crazy stories like uh, Jason Sands, or, or are they more nuts and bolts guys, you, you know, just involved in crash retrievals or reverse engineering? I had no idea that David Grush was talking to anybody like this, uh, if he is indeed one of David Grush's 40 whistleblowers. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, mind-blowing stuff, guys. Mind-blowing stuff. Let me know what you think about it all in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Uh, smash the like button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Discord links below. Love to see you guys there. Uh, support the channel by buying some merch in the merch store or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.